Hey everyone, welcome to the brand new season of Carton Conversations, presented by Guayaki. I'm your host, Jake. And I'm your host, Elliot. Today we have a very special guest, a young legend. <laughs> Some would say the king of hyper pop, <laughs> Glaive! <laughs> First time in Chicago, how do you feel? It feels good. It feels good. Um, it's just a big, big city. I'm from a really small, like, place, so it's very different, but I've been having fun. Where did Jake <laughs> take you to eat last night? Where did you take me? I have no idea what it's called. Pequods. Very good. Very yep. good. Very he said different. it was pizza that tasted like lasagna. If that's offensive, I didn't mean that. Okay, but no, if it isn't, no. it, it was just, good. It was good. It was we, good pizza. we also had an unsuccessful trip to the Bean. <sighs> they kicked us out. You got kicked out of the Bean. We hopped, we hopped the little gate, <laughs> went over there, and the guy came over, and he's, he, he had his little thing, he was talking to his supervisor, and we're like, oh, we're leaving, dude. He's like, are you exiting? We're like, yeah, we just said we're leaving. He's like, I'm not trying to tell on you. I'm just telling my supervisor. And we're like, dude, you're telling on us. <laughs> you got to stop sneaking into the bean. You do that too often. I've never, I've never gone to the bean. I only went to the bean for this guy. <laughs> Anyways, off the bean. So, Glaive, I know you were from Florida originally. Uh -huh. yeah, what yeah. was it like growing up there at the start? Um, it was cool. It's definitely very different from North Carolina. Uh, like, I was from, like, south, southern Florida, mm -hmm. so it's very different. Like, North Carolina, nothing mm -hmm. happened. Southern Florida, stuff was going on all the time. Okay. But it was it was cool. It introduced me to, like, people. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, I got to experience a lot more stuff that I probably would have never experienced if I was always living in North Carolina, mm -hmm. which is where I live currently. But, yeah, it, it was super cool. When, <laughs> when did you make that move from Florida to Hendersonville? Oh, I was super, I was, like, 10. 11, but oh, nice. the majority of it was spent in like Southern Florida and then I moved up here and then the last like my teenage years and the years that people like actually like become human beings. It's uh -huh. like, so most of your growing um, up years was in Hendersonville, what, what was it like having that be the place that kind of shapes you to who you are? <laughs> I mean, it's cool. I've, I've definitely said some negative things about <laughs> Hendersonville in the past, but it's cool. It's a, it's a small town. Not much goes on. It's kind of boring, but like yeah. it's the place I'm from. So I, it's like, you I can't, think you I've know. told you this before. My dad's like weirdly obsessed with Hendersonville. <laughs> like when, <laughs> I, I, when you said you were from Hendersonville, I was like, I actually know that place. <laughs> um, he has a bunch of friends that live there for some reason. I don't know why. But um, he always talks very highly of it. It's supposed yeah. to be like a really beautiful like, nature-wise. That's definitely definitely something you can take away from it. Nature-wise and just like outside, being outside is beautiful. Like trees, nature, green. It's just, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. But yeah. <laughs> so was Chicky with you in Florida or Hendersonville? Huh? Was Chicky with you in Florida or Hendersonville? What's that? Chicky. Chicky. What, what is that? An old friend of yours. What are you... Wait, <laughs> what? Is that, are you talking about like the imaginary friend I had when I was like seven? Yes. Yeah. What? <laughs> Who told you all about that? Okay, you're talking about the imaginary friend I had when I was like a like a child, like yeah. a literal child. I haven't yes. thought about that since I was like five. Yeah. So where was he? Florida? Florida. Florida. Oh, what? What was Chicky like? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that just that just hit me with the right hook. I don't even. He was like a little like imaginary like chicken that I like. Imagined. <laughs> he was a chicken. I think so. I don't oh, remember. Wow, that's crazy. I, he was just there, and I thought it, it was like because I was an only child, so I was just like thinking of stuff. But yeah. What? What was some stuff you and Chicky used to do? We would just walk around, like, my dad had like a farm, we would just walk around there, and he had horses and stuff. What? I'm still kind of, how do you, okay. I'm we not, did I'm our still, research. You did your research. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Was Chicky ever blue when, like, you would eat chicken around him? I don't feel like I did that. I feel like mm. I would have been messed up. That's really respectful. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I didn't want to be disrespectful to him mm. as people, but, like... Anyways, off of that. <laughs> that's, that's nice of you. So, at what point did you start creating music? Um, well, I'd always really liked music, and I was into, like, SoundCloud and stuff like that. And then quarantine happened, and I was just really bored. So then I started, like, recording stuff, mm -hmm. and then I guess that's been, like, the last year. Like, 2020 was, like, the beginning, and then now we're in, like, early 2021, or I guess middle 2021, mm -hmm. and I've been doing it basically since then, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think, like, growing up in high school, being in band influenced you starting to make music? Oh, what the fuck? That's disgusting! Who showed you that picture? What the fuck? Oh no, bruh. Okay, yeah. I was in band. Um, <laughs> I don't feel like it helped me musically because I don't do any like instrumentation stuff that I did in band, but I was, I was really bad at clarinet, so my band teacher made me stop playing it, so I did percussion. Which I think did help me actually. Like FL Studio is the same as like percussion, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And I used FL Studio and I did a lot of production stuff at first. So <clears throat> I guess yeah, that picture is disgusting. Yeah. Rumor has it you're quite the troublemaker in band. I was. Yeah. The teacher had to call your mom, huh? 
How do you all know? <laughs> it is. What the hell? Yeah, my, my, my mom got a call from my band teacher because I was like disrupting the class. And that was like the only time I ever really got in trouble in school. What but, was the name of your band teacher? <laughs> his name was Mr. Dickinson, and I don't mm. like him at all. I hope he wakes up every day and knows that, like, oh, I hate him so much. Whoa. <laughs> Damn, me and Jake actually talked to him. He you said, did? Yeah, he said nothing but good things about you, so that's, we'll cut that part out. We'll cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we got some more photos. We're gonna go one by one. What's going on here? What the hell? Um, I was in like a class and we had to do this project and it was like a history thing mm. and I like won something and I had to go to like the next level, so like the state level I think. Mm. And we had to go somewhere and this was like the North Carolina Museum of History and if I won I didn't win there, but if I did I would have kept going. But this was like for a history project I did in I've like, heard that grade. you're quite the scholar. I would say so. I would say so. Definitely. Is, is it true that in your in when you were in middle school, you scored a perfect on like a, a English exam, and only two students of the 150 years of your school have scored a perfect on that exam? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Y'all know this, but yeah, that did happen. Um, I was really good at English, and I'm, that was like my big subject. So history was like this was for an English class. We were doing like a his, like an English project about history. Mm. So I was really good at English, and yeah, I was. I was definitely pretty smart. More recently, not so, but definitely back then, I was I was a bit of a scholar, hey, you know. Hey, Mr. Dickinson gave us some good insight. <laughs> you crazy? All right, you take it to the next one. What's going on here? Oh, Baby Glaze. I was a child. I don't particularly remember this day. <laughs> I don't even remember that thing, but I looked like I was having a good time. Notice the point. I was what pointing. were you pointing at? I wish I knew. I was probably pointing at my parents, my mm. dad or something. But honestly, I have no idea. That's All a beautiful right. moment. It is a beautiful moment. We'll take it up one more, Mike. The point comes back. The point comes back. What are you pointing <laughs> at here? I don't know. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I feel like I was just always pointing. Oh my god, I haven't seen that picture since I was like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've actually never seen that picture before in my life. Oh my god. Yeah, I guess I was just a big pointer. Big pointer mm, guy. Love that. I think we have one or two more. See what else we got. Another, Another point. point. Yeah, pointing I'm again. Point. I have a real problem. <laughs> a young me just Surf's I just pointed. Up, Surf's up. I was really living my life just pointing at everything. I again no idea what's going on in this picture, but I look like I'm having a good Is time. Is it true that you were once like the star of the Battle for the Books competition? <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> that was like a seventh grade. Whoa! <laughs> 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 Yeah, so <laughs> this is another like English thing and you would like read books, right? And then you would go, this is like really nerd, nerd stuff, but like you would read these books and then you would go and like talk, you'd get like quizzed on it and whichever team answered the most questions correct would win. Mm -hmm. And our, my like school won and this was like my little middle school like battle of the books team and we won. It was a good day. Hey, clap it up for Glaive being a scholar. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I kind of noticed just going through all these pictures, um, I'm just talking about you as a student, is it sounded like you were really good at English. <laughs> Do you think that's translated over to your writing skills Definitely. as a musician? Definitely. I'm really bad at like writing like informational stuff, so I was never good at any stuff like that, but like creative writing, definitely. And I've always enjoyed like reading and like stories and stuff like that, and I feel like that's kind of mm -hmm. what I do in like songwriting. Whether they're good stories or like interesting is up for debate, but I think that that's kind of like shaped the way I do music, is being like interested in English and stuff. Of course, and then be, being from such a small town, did you ever find it challenging to be creative there? Or mm -hmm. did you always had just such a, a crazy mind that- Definitely found it challenging things? at first. Um, before quarantine, I was like doing like music. I was like, like I enjoyed music and I was like trying to record stuff, but it was like, I would never show anybody. And it was like, it was just kind of embarrassing, right? You know, and it's just how it is. Mm -hmm. But then when quarantine started, I just was like, whatever, I'm just gonna do it. Like nobody's, I don't go to school anymore. So nobody's gonna like say anything. So, but yeah, definitely at first I was like. <clears throat> That's how small towns are though. They're not yeah. very like uh, accepting of creatives. It's definitely. not that they're not, they're not against they it. They just don't get it. Yeah, it exactly. just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen there. So, yeah. yeah, but everyone now is really cool about it. But like, I'm sure in the middle, like in like quarantine when I was starting, I was really bad. Yeah. It wouldn't have been fun. Of course they're cool <laughs> with it now. He's a damn superstar. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I know you told me that. So like for the year that school wasn't happening, mm -hmm. you were obviously making music. Just a couple of weeks ago, you started going back to mm -hmm. school. And the kids didn't know you were going to go back to class? <laughs> yeah. I went, so I didn't go back for like the entirety of the year. Like, like this last year, I didn't go at all. I had like so many absences. And the only reason I went back, I wouldn't have gone back at all, was I was failing. <laughs> I was failing like all the classes I was taking. So, again, I was a bit of a scholar. But uh, I, was, <laughs> I was failing all these classes. My mom made me go back. And they had no idea I was coming back, like the people there. 
and yeah, the, some of them have been weird, some of them have been really cool about it, but it's it's cool to see that people like like it, which is it's super refreshing. Were your classmates always receptive of this or of like your music, or was it once it started kind of popping? Um, none of them like I don't think I think they found out about it because it was like doing well. They didn't like I wasn't like going around school and being like hand out mixtapes and stuff. It's just yeah. I was never like that, and I, I was always just on the internet doing that. So it was like yeah, people in my school didn't really find out about it until like. They just heard about it from like other people. Mm. So as you were making this music, you know, in quarantine, what were your parents' initial thoughts to you starting to make music and kind of like come out of your box? Um, well, at first they were just like, cool. It's just something he was doing. It was like a hobby. It was something to pass time during quarantine. There was nothing really going on. And then as it's progressed, they've got more and more like, oh, he could actually do this as a job. And at first it was always like, you, as long as you keep above A's in all your classes, you can do music and you can do all this. And then like a few months ago, it was like, oh, as long as you're passing all your classes, you can do this. And then it's like, as long as you like graduate, you'll be fine. So up until, yeah, I went to LA and I was like failing. I had like 31 absences in math class. It's not good. It's not good. But they're like a lot more chill about it now. But definitely back then, if I was having like absences every day, mm -hmm. they wouldn't let me do music. You missed but a whole month of math class? I did, I did. <laughs> was, was there a certain moment in your career, kind of when your parents made that transition, being like, okay, yeah, he's clearly doing something great here. We're going to be a little bit more lenient and let him do what he wants to do. Definitely, maybe when I got a manager, they thought that that was pretty, pretty significant. Shout out to Dan. Dan, up for Dan. Dan. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That they thought that that was pretty serious. Mm -hmm. um, talking to labels, they thought that because that, that's like a like a more like a common thing. It's like people can understand that it's like labels. They have like money and yada yada yada. Yeah. They, it's a, easier to understand than just like of uploading course. stuff on SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. That was that, and then just like people like they started reading like articles about me and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They just yeah. That, that all that together they were like that's yeah. amazing to take it back a little bit who were some of your musical influences growing up um well it was really just what my parents were playing um mm -hmm. at first they were just playing all the stuff that was on the radio my mom is like huge into like pop music and she still is mm -hmm. but it was just like that whatever was on the radio was what i was listening to and even looking back they weren't the best songs but they're really catchy and it, that's definitely influenced my music a lot because i enjoy like trying to make everything really catchy about it and then my dad like introduced me to like rock music from when he was my age and he's still into that to this day and then i just got into like edm on youtube from like mm -hmm. youtube recommended videos and then i got into like rap and i started listening to like lil wayne it's like the, yeah i could talk about lil wayne for a very long time i really like lil wayne <laughs> but that that was like my first like 14 it's like rap music i guess and then it kind of all like came together when i started making music and people think there are like these huge crazy influences. It's just kind of like a blend of everything mm -hmm. together. I would like to talk about Lil Wayne with you. <laughs> What's your favorite Lil Wayne album? I really like the one he put out recently. A lot of people don't like really? that one. I really? Like okay. That one. I guess it was because it was a really like good time in my life. Because mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know, before I was like really young, I didn't really understand what he was talking about. Yeah. And then now I was like actually like able to like understand it mm -hmm. a little more, and that was super interesting. What's but, your favorite Lil Wayne song? I don't know. <laughs> There's too many. I would have to like go through like a list. I have like almost all of his songs liked on Spotify, but mm. I'd have to like go through and do like a three hour listen through and figure out which one, but <laughs> I, I, I like a lot of them. <laughs> uh, off Lil Wayne. So where does the name Glaive come from? Um, so when I was starting music, like a little bit, when quarantine started, I wasn't doing like music at all. Mm -hmm. So there's like a few like month period, like March, right? Like it, I think school ended on March 15th. Mm -hmm. So I was like from March 15th to April, I wasn't really doing anything. So I was just playing mm -hmm. video games. And there's this video game called Dark Souls, Dark Souls 3. And I was fighting this boss in Dark Souls 3. And it was the most annoying thing I think I've ever done. It's like, that game is challenging. If you don't know, it's a difficult game. Mm -hmm. And this boss, and it's called, I think it's called Udex Gunder. <laughs> and there's this weapon in the back of the boss fight that you can get called the glaive mm. and I was like Subconsciously, I'm like, I think this is gonna be my music name and it all kind of came together <laughs> It's just I happened to be playing that video game like looking back I probably would have thought of something a little more like <laughs> Interesting with a cool backstory, but that's that's kind of how it came to be Amazing and then did you did you grow up watching like other people play video games? I know that's like uh, definitely definitely unlike YouTube That's like all I did when I was younger was just watch like dudes play video games. And then I heard recently in LA you had an, uh, an interesting encounter with Banks. <laughs> yeah. I met him at, uh, I was with Zach Via. I met him. Classic. He was, he was there. It was cool. Obviously, I've known about him for ages. He's like a YouTube legend, basically, at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's going crazy right now with like the whole Aiden Ross thing and stuff. He's yeah. like, they're doing that whole like Cloud House 2 thing again. So mm -hmm. he's, he's going crazy. Yeah, it was cool to meet him in person. Yeah, shout out Banks and for Zach Via. Sure. For sure. So what can you tell me about Shannon Auten? Shannon Auten? You may know her as Mrs. Auten. 
Yo, is that the principal of the school I go to right now? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? Okay, um, I, I've never talked to her. I've heard that she's tried to talk to me, but I, I don't really know her good, like that. Good or bad? I, I have no idea, but um, somebody told me that she was like walking up behind me and she was like opening her mouth to talk to me and I just like turned a corner and I didn't talk to her. But she's like the new principal at the school I go to. <laughs> and uh, she, I've only ever seen her do like one thing. She was like, we had this, like, this huge speech. She was like, you guys are gonna come back to school next year. It's gonna be good. And that's all I really know about her. I, she's just there. Shout out to Mrs. Ong. <laughs> Shout out Mrs. Ong, uh, for real. So I know I brought this up earlier in the intro to the interview. A lot of people would consider you one of the faces of hyper pop. Mm -hmm. I know that term is kind of thrown around, and like a lot of the artists in that world that I speak to don't really love the word hyper pop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts on that word? Um, I don't really care. It's like it's just a genre name. I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of people that make music don't particularly like if they get forced into a genre, they don't really like the name for it. So it's like whatever. As long as people listen to the music, I don't really care, you know? Do, do you consider yourself a hyper-pop artist? <laughs> I wouldn't say so. I definitely don't think that that's like a real like genre, because like there's such a variety of like musicians under that <laughs> hyper-pop genre. So it's impossibly like this song and this song, which are two completely different songs. Like, they don't sound anything alike to say they're in the same genre. So I wouldn't say so. Definitely have some elements that fit into hyper-pop. What, what, what's the best way we could describe your music to someone that's never listened to it? I, I wouldn't really know. I feel like earlier it was like really pop music mm -hmm. and like, like up-tempo, like really fast hyper-pop music, which makes sense, hyper-pop. Mm -hmm. But then more recently it's been more like trap production with like interesting guitar and bass lines it's i, I wouldn't really know <laughs> i feel like i'll leave that up to people who listen to my music i think my favorite yeah. thing you've ever told me the first time we met you told me uh, when i asked you what your music sounded like you told me that it was just uh you having extreme adhd <laughs> and that that's the reason your music sounds like that yeah definitely i feel like that that's exactly it because all the music i was listening to like blended together and then i also just have like a lot of energy all the time so mm -hmm. it came together to make like a really energetic version of what i was listening so to. just pretty natural just to be on these insane beats and then just flow perfectly yeah over that's definitely definitely been a very natural thing <laughs> so the hyper pop scene is known for being extremely inclusive and accepting of everyone do you feel like that gives you a certain type of freedom when it comes to making music like you aren't boxed into one certain type of sound definitely definitely um, I think that it's super, yeah, it's amazing. It allows you to really do whatever you want. Like, you don't have to be like, oh, I'm only gonna rap on this type of beat, or I'm only gonna do yada, yada, yada. It allows you to really do whatever kind of music you like. And people aren't there for like a certain type of genre. They're here because they enjoy your music and they enjoy the way that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's super interesting. Cause I've done like stuff that's really poppy and I've done stuff that's more like aggressive. It's like, mm -hmm. and people still really like, there's people that really like this and people really like that. And it's cool to see that they can like, enjoy whatever it doesn't really matter what what it is you know of course and looking at your first body of work what, what does cypress grove mean to you um looking back it's just like the first thing like the first music thing i ever like put my mind to and like did it mm -hmm. looking back probably not the best <laughs> music people really enjoy it but i think that i definitely nowadays if i went back and redid it i could do it a lot better but I mean, it's an important part of the music that I make. It's an important part of like people finding out about my music. And I think the songs on there are wonderful and I'm very happy I put them out, but you know, it's just old now. Yeah, I think that's with any artist is just continuing yeah. to grow. And I love Cypress Grove. Some of my favorite songs are on there. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's just important for you to have that first body of work out there. Yeah, just definitely. To see what, for people to see what you make. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna come back, new music on the yeah, way. And it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be super exciting. <laughs> I'm really excited for it. Me too. Um, I'm curious to know, how did you first meet Eric, Doa, Breakins, and Midwest. Oh, all online. I met every single one of them online. Um, first, I met Edgar Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, met him a long time ago. I think like 2020, like we met up for the first time at a mall. Like a, this was like right like quarantine. I, I think it hadn't even started yet. It was a little bit before quarantine. Mm -hmm. So we were like still wearing masks because we knew that it, you weren't like supposed to, but like I met him. It was crazy. We had like a hundred followers each on SoundCloud. But like he was in, he was, cause I talked to him a lot and he was like the first person ever that was like really into my music. Mm -hmm. So it was like, he was like, oh, I'm, I'm like 10 minutes away from you. Where you are? Like, where are you? And we just met up at a mall. And I just talked to him for like an entire day. And then that, that's crazy. What was he doing out there? Cause I'm pretty sure he's from Indiana. He's from Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. He was doing like a driving test in like Asheville, which is the nearest like city <laughs> to where I am. So it was a very like lucky thing that he was there, but typical, it was cool. Typical and then, 15, 16 year old kid stuff. <laughs> that's a far driving test. <laughs> yeah, <for real. laughs> yeah. It was super cool though. And then Eric, I met him online. We were playing like CSGO, like a video game. And I was just making fun of him. 
because like I was just a fan of him and I was just like making fun of him pretty much, and and then I ended up talking to him. He ended up liking my music, and then it all yeah yeah that's kind of how that happened. And then Breakins, I was just a really big fan. He reached out to me and then we did some stuff, and he's super sick. Yeah. When did you and Eric first meet in person? Um, I did a video with a company called Overcast, uh, and it was like they they needed like people to be in the background, and Eric was gonna be the people in the background. He isn't even in the background of the video, but he came through to be in this video. And he was like four hours late, and, but I still got to meet him. It was like pitch black outside, and I only saw him for like two hours, and then he left. And he went back to Atlanta, and <laughs> it was still a very cool first meeting. But then. Like, more recently, I've spent a lot of time with him, like, in Airbnbs and stuff. But yeah, yeah you guys had time. the Hyper Pop House. We did, we did have the Hyper Pop House. What, what, was, what was that, like, a weekend? Uh, that was, like, a week, I think it was ten days, actually. What, it was, what was going on during those ten days? Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was very fun, it was very fun. It was the first time me and Eric were in, like, a really nice house, because, like, neither of us are, like, we're, like, from, like, the, the worst situation of all time, but neither, neither of us were, like, rich. So we were in, like, this really nice house, floor-to-ceiling windows. We were so geeked at all the time. It was, like, it was, it was crazy. It was super fun. And we were just making some really fun music. Like, we just, it, it was kind of, it was kind of messed up. It was kind of, like, a scuff setup. Like, he threw his jacket over the microphone, so we didn't have a, because we didn't have a pop filter. We, we had the microphone, like, sitting on a chair. It wasn't, it wasn't the best recording setup, but it worked out, and we had made some really good songs, and yeah. Mm. And then you guys made the uh, Cloaks and Daggers video as well. Yes, of course. It was super the, fun. Was the super one, fun. the one day video. The one, the song. one day song and video. That was a super fun day. Shot yeah. on the iPhone 12. Shot right? on the iPhone 12. That's exactly. amazing. <laughs> and you, you guys have been working on a whole project together. <laughs> yes, we have. We have. It's super sick. Uh, and we need to finish it. <laughs> it's not finished yet, but it, it, it's almost done. It's definitely getting there. It's definitely getting there. Okay, and then so um, last summer, Asher was kind of your first breakout song, where I think everybody kind of started to really pay attention like oh this kid's going crazy how, how'd that song even come together um that was like a really uh like a weird song i wrote the lyrics for a different song a completely different song the words were a little different but they were almost the same mm -hmm. and i was like i didn't really like that other song at all and i listening back to it, it kind of sucked <laughs> but then somebody sent me this beat and i heard it and i was like this is the craziest thing i've ever heard so i just reused the entire lyrics that entire song and i just recorded it in like 20 minutes because i already had everything done for it mm -hmm. and then i did it and then i mixed it and then i put it out and then people really liked it. And it was it was cool. It was a, it was a very fast. Said, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Was Astrid a real person? Astrid is a real person, but their name is on Astrid. It's a. Uh, what's yeah, the name? I gotta say the name. <laughs> I say Don't listen to him. You gotta say the name. <laughs> Don't listen to Jake. He's gonna get you exposed. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not gonna say their name, but they're 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 a good person. No matter what the song says, they're a good person. But yeah, I'm not bad at. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like when you saw Lana Del Rey post Astrid on Instagram? I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> I remember Dan, my manager, sent mm -hmm. it to me. I was like, whoa, Alain Del Rey, that's crazy. And I mean, I was just like, wow. I didn't really know what to say. <laughs> I was like, cool. Yeah, what was it, her brother's? Yeah, her brother like directed or something. I had no idea. That's crazy. <laughs> so we have this segment on our show called Quick Sips, right? Mm -hmm. It's a lightning round of questions we put together for you. You have 60 seconds to answer as many as you can. The time starts after Jake asks the first question. I got you. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah I'm ready. Let's do it. Eric, Doa, or Dan? Dan. Rebecca Sorry. mom or Rebecca black? Rebecca, my mom. <laughs> Sorry. Skater boy or girlfriend? <sighs> Skater boy. Glaive three or Glaive four? <laughs> it has to be Glaive three. People don't know about Glaive four. What is Glaive short for? Uh, Glaivester. <laughs> is it true that you eat Papa John's pizza every Wednesday? No. Almost. Almost every Wednesday, but not every Wednesday. Cypress Grove or All Dogs Go to Heaven? All Dogs Go to Heaven, a thousand percent. Big Time Rush or Orangutans? Orangutans. I love Big Time Rush, but... <laughs> Mr. Gates or Mrs. Zinn? Who? What? Mr. Gates. Mr. Miss... Uh, what position did you play in football? Quarterback and linebacker. <laughs> Low baby or nav? Oh, little baby. I love nap, but little baby. Left on scene or delivered? Ooh, delivered, delivered, because they might not have seen it. Are you excited for your early dismissal next Friday? Yes, I'm super excited. What? How do you know that? song of all time. And the time is up. Clap it up for me. It actually got pretty far. You got that was uh, impressive. you got 13, almost 14, but your score is 13. So basically, at the end of the season, if you have the highest score, the score is how many you answer. If you mm -hmm. have the highest score, you get a gift from us. Let's go. So okay. you just gotta Fingers hope crossed. everybody else. Sucks. You're in first place for this season. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> first episode. <laughs> uh, is there any of those quick steps you want to expand on? 
I could definitely talk. I don't remember any of them. Did, the, <laughs> did, did the Mr. Gates or Mrs. Zen throw you off? Yeah, I don't know who these people are. Really? Mr. Gates and Mrs. Zen? Zen. Z-I. Your sister's principal. The piece that goes to my... Mrs. Z... Oh, yeah. Who's Mr. Gates? The other two assistant I've principal. never talked to Mr. Gates. Mrs. Zen oh, is... Oh, man. Is, re, is it... Is it... Will people hear this? I don't like her at all. She is... Oh. She's not, she's not my favorite. Sorry, Mrs. You can tell this guy's done with school in this series. <laughs> the interview won't come out until I think you're out of school. Okay, so perfect. Good. And okay, then, for right now, Ms. Zen, I love you. But in the future, it's not it. Shit's cooked. Um, Papa John's Pizza every Wednesday at your school, right? Papa John's Pizza every Wednesday. It's not, but I don't get it every Wednesday. But it is there. It's not that good. I don't think it's, I feel cold. like it's fake, Papa. It's cold, yeah, it's cold, like, uh, slimy, not nice at all. So yesterday, before you took the flight to Chicago, mm -hmm. did you eat a cheese quesadilla at lunch? We got offered to get cheese quesadilla, I didn't eat anything. But you do, but that's what, like, that was what lunch was yesterday. Okay. I don't know, hang on, this is weird. So what's it like having carrots as the vegetable of the month at your school right now? <laughs> that's not, how do you, how do you know this? I don't know, I don't, I don't particularly eat school lunch, it's not for me, but... But I've seen it. It's not good. It's it's gross. It's not good at all. Glaive four. Glaive four. Yeah. I just got accepted in yesterday. I'm honored. <laughs> yeah, that's my private Twitter account. Uh, you could. It's a good. Is it good? It's incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, if I follow like a thousand people are on it. It's cool. If you find it, follow it. I might accept it, but you never know. <laughs> and then arguably my favorite quick sip we had. Rebecca Mom or Rebecca Black. <sighs> I feel like I can't go, I feel like it's mad disrespectful to not go with my mom for that. <laughs> I do love Rebecca Black. She's, I've talked to her a few times, she's super nice, but I think I have to go with my mom. Mm. No, of course. Yeah. Of course. So all, all the talk of high school right there. High school is done in a week. Mm -hmm. Do you plan on going to college or not? Oh, I, as long, if music keeps going as well as it's going, I'm a thousand percent not going to college. <laughs> I have no interest in going to college, but if I, if it doesn't, then I'll go. You I, know. I think you'll be just fine. Hopefully. Fingers crossed, but mm. you never know. Who are some artists that you want to work with in the future? Whew. We're talking about this on the way here. I'd love to work with 24K Golden. Really mm -hmm. think his hook writing is like out of this world. Um, I, like almost every rapper, I feel like it wouldn't really make much sense, but like I would be down to do it. <laughs> like um, just just a, that's what I listen to really, just like rap music. Yeah, so yeah. I'd, I'd be down to do any, really any of them. <laughs> Anytime I've talked to you about uh, what music you listen to, you always surprise me. The first time I met you, told me your favorite rapper was Lil Tecca. Yeah, I love Lil Tecca. Then you talk about your love for Lil Baby and love Nav. Lil Baby. Love Nav. Mm -hmm. They're all so good. I just like happy music, mm -hmm. and like that's what that's that's who's making happy music nowadays. Nav and Tecca. <clears throat> So, so nice. And most recently, I heard that you had a love for young bands. Of course. Super crazy. So he DM'd Amazing. me on Instagram. Oh my god, I was so excited. That's crazy. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> He's goaded, yeah. Super, super, like just, yeah, one of the goats. Well, you're gonna, be with the, you're gonna be with a bunch of rappers coming up here. Summer Smash, your first show. Are you excited? Nervous? What, what are your feelings there? I mean, right now I'm super excited, but when it gets close to the actual day, I'll be nervous. But right now, mm -hmm. nothing but excited. It's mm -hmm. gonna be super fun. That's your first time performing? Mm -hmm. First time, like, being at live music ever. I've never ever? First time you got paid to perform any of that? First time I've ever like performed anything, and first time I've ever been to like live music ever. I've Is this the first time you've life. been paid to sing? Uh -huh. Are you a liar? Paid to sing? I feel like I've never. Okay. When you were six <laughs> Once, years old. When I was six, they, my parents used to go to these like parties for work, and I would like I would just get on the microphone. I wasn't even good at singing. Like mm -hmm. I was, just, but I would, and people would like throw money at me. I mean, like twenty dollars one time. I was up. What, what were you singing? Just like whatever song they were playing, I was just into pop music, and they would just play stuff that was on the radio, and I knew all the words. You were just bringing in the big bucks. Twenty dollars a night. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, twenty bucks when you're six? That's like ten grand. It is. Are you it's kidding like, me? Oh, dude, you're going crazy at seven eleven with twenty bucks. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, thank you guys for watching this episode of Carton Conversations, <laughs> presented by Guyaki. Leave a comment, let us know who you want to see in the next episode. Uh, shout out to Mike, Mulatto, Tony, Jake. Are you guys for making this possible? I appreciate Dan, it. Dan, Dan, of course. Hey, one, more, one more round of applause for Dan. Yeah. And the biggest, the biggest for our brother Glaive right here, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. I'm Elliot. I'm Jake. I'm Glaive. Peace. <laughs>